few months ago, uh, Hanover Re conducted a pilot of the technology and services provided by Alula Technologies uh, and Ally Health, uh, including our PPG face scanning technology, uh, which detects the blood flow uh, beneath the skin on somebody's face uh, and can draw conclusions about uh, various health metrics based on that. Uh, the integration of third party data, uh, including device agnostic wearable data, uh, and the integration uh, of medical testing uh, information. And the idea is to use this to provide a holistic view of health. And the point of our pilot was to assess the relevance of this and the potential of this uh, to provide insights for the life and health insurance market. Uh, and potentially improve products for customers, uh, and improve information for insurers uh, and reinsurers. Um, we conducted a webinar to share um, our thoughts on the potential uh, for this technology following the pilot, uh, and that's available on our website, uh, along with an article that we wrote uh, alongside Ally Health and Alula, um, summarizing that. Uh, but we had a lot of engagement on that webinar uh, and a lot of questions that we were unable to get to on the day. Uh, and so we decided to follow up today to address some of these topics um, and just continue the discussion about the potential for this technology. So I'm joined again today uh, by Simon Spur from Alula Technologies. Uh, they specialize in supporting life and health insurers uh, with business critical solutions improving process efficiency and integrating third party data. We also have uh, Kelly Kleeper, uh, who's CEO and co-founder of Ally Health, and they focus on solving the last mile of healthcare with their tech enabled platform, bringing, bringing clinical care to patients' front doors. And then I have a couple of my colleagues uh, on the webinar today. Uh, we have Gareth Matthews, uh, who's our chief underwriter in the UK, uh, and Lisa Balboa, who's head of our digital business accelerator, leading Hanover East Global Innovation Network, focusing, focusing on harnessing digital and innovation to create value for our life and health insurance clients. So jumping straight into uh, some of the topics that were raised during the webinar uh, that we want to touch on today. And one of the key things is around the ass assessment of somebody's health using this technology. Now, health is obviously uh, a very complicated topic um, and it's difficult to build a holistic view of someone's health. Uh, and there were various questions around how exactly uh, the metrics are chosen and how everything's brought together, how the data is combined to truly give uh, an accurate sort of metric of uh, somebody's health status uh, so that it's actually useful in perhaps um, assessing that person's needs in terms of follow up or uh, potential additional interventions. Uh, so Simon, perhaps I could come to you first. Uh, how does uh, Alula's technology, uh, supported by Ally Health as well, uh, assess various health metrics and conditions and provide a sort of comprehensive health evaluation using this VivaScore solution? Thanks, Tim. So, so really, I mean, when we set out uh, to, to kind of solve the big question um, from the pilot was bringing this combination of data using our really our, our data integration methodologies that we've established over many years um, and, and bringing together the power uh, of smartphone data, wearable technologies, um, digital health checks, as, as you said, through RPBG facial scanning, and then leading into um, building an understanding of somebody's health um, and then offering an in-person biometric and diagnostics um, assessment uh, with our partnership with Ally Health. So, so really, I mean, the purpose for us was this digitally led or digitally enabled program um, for high accessibility, convenience, ultimately um, trying to address a, a lower cost or kind of lower barrier to entry um, to build this understanding of health risk and then signpost those people that we identify as higher risk um, into a real life measurement. Um, and our view is this will be used at various points in a life cycle of a policy. Um, in terms of the actual bringing together the data, so 
what we've done in our VivaScore application is we've integrated with multiple wearable devices. Um, so that data with consent from the user, if they have a device or they have a phone, they connect that in the app. Um, we have an embedded RPPG solution, which um, allows you to take these 30 second facial scans. And then we, we triangulate that data into our score. Now, I think one of the questions and feedback that we had from, from the pilot was kind of what does that score mean? Um, how does it, how do we interpret it to ourselves? And maybe importantly, just to, from an understanding perspective is the score is really a numerical indicator that we've developed, which is, is a health status um, based on the various data sets. So our algorithm pulls these data points through. Uh, we assess um, up to 64 different data points um, with whatever's available through the technology. And then we build this picture of, of a number of zero to 100, zero being very low and 100 being um, high and optimal. This is different in, in the mechanics of a health index, um, which is really where you would see a, a kind of measurement to gauge someone's life expectancy or really understand mortality risk. Whereas our score is, 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 is a different um, way of approaching that based on this various collection of different data points. So I think that, that was what we set out to do. Um, I hope that gives uh, the audience a little bit more of an understanding of what the score is. Um, and I, I think Kelly, maybe it's worth just um, adding your kind of thoughts in terms of you know how we you know built that picture of this digital um, view and then how we see the the, the kind of move into this in-person led uh, physical screening. Absolutely, thanks, Simon. So from our perspective at Ally Health, really the way that we envision the partnership. Uh, with Alula and with VivaScore is to really augment the uh, insights that were gathered through the digital health um, indicators and really augment that through, uh, as you mentioned, Tim and Simon, augment it with uh, biometrics and uh, test diagnostics results that uh, more nurses were able to take at the patient side. So some of these Bloods, spe specifically bloods metrics, are really interesting to us. Uh, so we measured HDL, LDL, cholesterol. If we if we take a moment to stop on cholesterol, it's probably a very interesting marker to, to look at because uh, it is symptom-free. Anyone who has an elevated cholesterol wouldn't know uh, unless they were testing for it. So from our perspective, it's really interesting to augment the insights that were gathered in the first instance through, um, through the virtual measurements and... Um, and move into determining a, a bit more uh, of a, a precise view of that person's uh, position in, in their um, yeah, risk level. One of the key questions uh, that came up quite a lot whenever we discuss this topic is the accuracy of this technology, uh, and particularly um, in addressing sort of diverse populations uh, and you know, quite a range of health metrics that we're trying to capture here. Um, so, Lisa, maybe I'll come to you initially. What's your view in terms of where we're at with the accuracy of some of these technologies at the moment? And, uh, and is there a lot more potential? Is there other improvements to come? Or uh, and how reliable do you think it is today? Yeah, accuracy of this technology is, of course, a very important point. If we're expecting customers to be adopting this RPPG technology, so this video selfie where within 30 seconds, they can get some insights into their health on things like blood pressure or cholesterol or blood sugar levels, then we need to be confident in the, the accuracy here. So within the pilot that we did with the Viva score as Hanover, we just had a sample size of 30 people. So of course, for us, we were just testing, uh, you know, the experience of this and the potentials at an early stage of this technology from natural perspective. 30 people is not going to be a big enough study for us to conclude on accuracy. So as part of uh, the global role that I play within the Life and Health Digital Business Accelerator at Hanover, our team is really committed to exploring the accuracy of this technology as well. So we are together with uh, our partners uh, in one of the markets around the globe doing a much bigger study where we'll have more than a thousand insured customers who have undertaken this sort of RPPG scan. And at the same time, they will be collecting from the nurse the blood pressure, the blood uh, cholesterol, the blood glucose. So we can really analyze that data and then understand firsthand about the accuracy of this technology. So I think that's really important to do that sort of testing. We, of course, are very close to the providers and do our due diligence when it comes to their published research. 
but uh, there's nothing like a really applying this in a real world setting, getting the feedback. So both from the accuracy perspective, but like you mentioned, Tim, in terms of diversity, actually ensuring customers are willing to embrace this technology, right? So which groups does this technology appeal to? We know that wearables appeal to a, a niche subset of the population. So that is a data stream that can be used by insurers, um, but not everyone will wear a wearable. Most people have a smartphone. So there is a lot of potential with this RPPG to get extra health insights. But again, how comfortable the different groups of people feel about using this technology and what sort of education do they need to really be comfortable with that face scan. So I think those real world learnings, both on the, the accuracy from a medical side and also from the real world, how customers are adopting this technology are some of the insights that we're looking to build up globally as well. And Simon, I'd be interested in your view on this from your side of the fence. So uh, I guess, as we've heard, the RPPG technology, there's various tests ongoing. And, and maybe I think it's probably fair to say differing views about where the technology is today, though I think a general acceptance of the potential for it. But that's obviously not the only element of this. Your solution brings together uh, a lot of data from a lot of sources. Uh, and so maybe you could sort of comment on the importance of uh, of that uh, and of different data sources out there. Thanks, Tim. I, I mean, I think it's important um, to, to uh, kind of position the fact that whilst in our VivaScore application that we use in the pilot, we have an embedded um, RPBG solution. This is a third party that we've worked with um, and as a partner of Alula's. Um, we, in, in our own exploratory um, workings with the market, we are continuous, continuously assessing various RPBG solutions. Um, both to test accuracies and efficacy of that. So from our perspective, I think really we, we've been very comfortable with the embedded um, uh, partner that we have inside the VivaScore application uh, for various reasons that were shown um, through the testing of, of this pilot and, and other work that we've been doing. I think the power of that engagement is really compelling. Um, you know, following on from Lisa, most people have a smartphone. This is a really easy way to engage and, and really kind of get some feedback instantly um, about their own health. Um, we certainly see uh, this kind of market and, and specifically around RPBG evolving quite quickly. So there's the kind of maturation phase that we're starting to see um, very similar to kind of wearables when they kind of came out in the early days. Um, you know, the, the, the kind of data is getting better, um, the, the technology is getting better. So, so we're seeing this kind of improvement on a continual basis. Um, I really, you know, from our perspective, it's, it's been able to assess that along with other pieces of information. And I think the combination as we set out to achieve in this pilot was can we use smartphone data together with wearables, together with RPPG, and then the in-person um, you know, blood testing and, and physical service and bring that all together um, in a really compelling view, both for the user of the tech, as well as um, those who are making decisions, you know, understanding risk um, and, and trying to work with a population group. So, you know, I think the kind of leads me to the point of, you know, the, the data accuracies around RPPG. So I know we, we had some questions um, in the webinar around something like BMI, so body mass index. Um, importantly, in, in our solution in VivaScore, we don't predict that BMI reading, neither does the RPPG solution. So this is captured by the user or this is um, brought through from the physical assessment with the nurse. So um, inside our VivaScore application, the, the RPPG is not assessing or deriving that metric. It's a calculation based on, on some of these height and weight. Um, and then probably the, the other points I think that was really um, kind of raised in, in some of the conversation was around certain areas around testing HIV or cotinine. You know, could these be available through this digital service? Um, at this point in time, I mean, our view from, from VivaScore's uh, technology is that this can be performed through an in-person blood test, which we would, through our partnership with Allah Health, is we'll be able to extend that service into, into a user group, and then we bring that data back. Um, there are some RPPG vendors who, who claim that the solution is able to detect um, things like smoking status. We have not assessed the validity of that yet, so I can't really give a, a strong view or an opinion. Um, but certainly, again, we, we see you know a, a great involvement um, in terms of this technology and, and significant improvements um, in terms of what the, the capabilities are. And Tim, maybe maybe I can add there. I think we, we are we're very aligned with the providers of this technology, um, and I mean it's really important that we do our own 
real world, real world studies here, but the providers of the technology are doing the exact same thing in the background. So we keep close to them. Um, and I think we've been close to them for perhaps three years now. And we see improvements in the accuracy over time. So it's all moving in the right direction. So I think that's a really positive thing to, to observe. And so in terms of the integration of this technology into life and health products, um, I think there are various opportunities here, but perhaps one of the, the most obvious and the one that people probably think of uh, first is using it through the underwriting process in some way, either to confirm uh, the underwriting questions and try and spot non-disclosure uh, or to replace perhaps some parts of the underwriting process um with some of this data to make the buying process easier for consumers and, and improve the data that's coming through um so gareth maybe i can come to you on this uh what do you see as the uh potential for this technology uh in the underwriting and uh yeah the underwriting process and, and generally how it might sort of help us from that perspective yeah, thanks, Tim. I mean, there are a number of ways that we can we can use this across the, the whole application journey, but let, let's sort of start with the conventional and, and then maybe talk a little bit about the potential. So I think we need to accept the fact that in most markets, the majority of underwriting offers are made through rules engines. It's been 20 years plus of investment in this space. Uh, they're really efficient and they're low cost. So it would take something quite exceptional to change the status quo in that respect. But a contactless medical exam or indeed an upload of uh, and an assessment of wearable health data could conceivably form part of that application process without adding significant time burden to the applicant. Um, so if you think most laptops, in fact, every laptop, I'm sure, has a, a high quality digital camera nowadays, um, that certainly would facilitate the, the, the high quality uh, assessment uh, th through a medical exam. Um, uh, the Alula Technologies system allows for the upload of the wearable data. Um, so I think that there's, there's, there's scope here for a seamless integration of either or both of those techniques. Um, so the results would allow us to better triage risks and that would give us more confidence in our standard pool and that would allow us to charge more competitive rates. And better rates should go some way to closing a protection gap and aid retention. And of course, in some instance, there will be a need to charge higher rates uh, due to risk factors unknown or perhaps not disclosed, which is your point there, Tim, around misrepresentation. So I think that in theory could reduce the number of claims that you're declining, because whilst they may not have fully disclosed at outset, you could have observed a risk factor and appropriately priced for it or given yourselves the opportunity to further interrogate during the underwriting process. So I think that's a positive from a consumer duty perspective. So the applicants would be charged the correct premium for the risk that they present to the pool. I think that's important too. Um, at the moment, there's a subset of that standard pool that currently pays uh, uh, arguably not the right premium. Um, and I think that in itself has an impact on the price that we charge the remaining pool. So I think those that return abnormal results, they can be triaged accordingly. Some of those results, they might align with, uh, with expected insofar as the applicant might have disclosed something that's evident in the contactless exam, but this too gives us greater confidence and it could result in a dynamic underwriting journey. So why ask about the last cholesterol reading if you've just measured it with a 30 second exam, it can definitely shorten that journey, uh, which is a positive, I think, for the, for the applicant. And then the next level of triage is Ally Health pick up on the appropriate exam or testing, unless it's deemed that the applicant should see their GP first. So I think you've got three tiers of triage effectively, those that you're confident in uh, are taking a standard pool risk, and then those where um, you're confident that you can make an offer uh, based on uh, findings uh, evident through the, 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 the short medical, and then obviously those where you think you need to tap into Ally Health's experience um, as part of the application process. And I think depending on your model, you could then look to offer the full Alula Ally Health solution to everyone who goes on risk, whether there are abnormal readings or not, because as risk carriers, we're invested in the health of our consumers and as the consumers should be just as invested in the health as we are. And put differently, it would be a health benefit throughout the lifetime of the policy that we would be offering to our clients.
In terms of changes in processes, these ongoing touch points over long durations of many interventional possibilities too, which is which would be quite different uh, from the traditional insurer-client relationship. And there's a strong potential there to improve overall health outcomes, aiding the insured, their family and society in the process. So there's a growing expectation from consumers that companies improve their service offerings and in insurers won't be immune to that. Technology and inherent alignments of interest allow us to move from pure risk carriers to partners in our customers' health. So a sustained improvement in health could lead to sales opportunities. And then there's scope, of course, with dynamic underwriting or pricing, which is complicated. Uh, this is really about what the potential could hold for these types of models. Uh, but it's definitely made achievable by such technology, particularly when digesting health data amassed over time through the wearable solutions. I'm happy to share some global perspectives as well, if that's helpful. So um, if you think about the, the solution that we uh, piloted here, um, was the VivaScore app. So we had lots of different streams of data, right? We had uh, the wearables data, we had the RPPG face scan data, we had the clinical health data. So there's lots of potentials for all of those streams of data right across the, the value stream. And uh, Gareth unpacked the, the underwriting potentials and the pricing potentials. I think there's downstream of that also potentials for this sort of technology to really support the health of Infos customers and uh, you know, can we use something like the RPPG and the wearables or, or within the, the VivaScore app to flag the higher risk customers and then prompt them to follow up action through, for example, Ali, Ali Health services. So not just alerting people using digital health data to their risks, but actually getting them follow up support uh, in an appropriate way uh, as well. So I think that that could be important for insurers if customers are aware of their health risks for things like cardiovascular disease, let's say, then to be able to prompt them and alert them to that and help them to take preventative action to, uh, let's say, get their cholesterol in check or get their blood pressure in check, that can then really be beneficial downstream. So it can help to prevent claims on the insurance policy. Um, and then most importantly for the customer, it helps them to live healthier and longer. So there's a real alignment of interest here between the, the tech providers in this space, the clinical providers in this space, as well as the insurers and, of course, that end insurance customer where all parties really want to use this sort of new technologies coupled with the traditional technologies to help people live healthier and longer. Great. Thank you, Lisa. Um, and we had quite a lot of interest in, uh, I guess, the data and legal side of things, uh, if I can put it like that. So naturally, uh, whenever we're talking about data and particularly and rightly with uh, people's medical data. Uh, it's a sensitive topic. Uh, people are wary about sharing their data um, and concerned about how it's going to be used. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, legal frameworks uh, in place globally uh, that we need to ensure we comply with um, to make sure that we're handling this data uh, and using it uh, in a way that is fair to policyholders um, and uh, ensuring that we're keeping everything confidential. So um, maybe probably Kelly and Simon, I'll come to you maybe Kelly first. Um, how does the solution uh, integrate, would you say, with existing medical and legal frameworks? Yes, sure. So from our perspective, the way that we've designed the integration with Alula is really in line with uh, the best standards of data privacy. So where we are collecting um, test results and sharing data with uh, the lab and back to Alula. All the information, all the data is anonymized using the unique um, patient ID, if you'd like, that Alula has assigned to, to this end user. Um, so there is no PII shared at any point in this journey from um, sending the test to the lab and returning the results to Alula. The one thing that we do have to share, of course, is the um, the sex of the patient, because that will affect the interpretation of the test results on some of the ranges um, that differ between men and women. Um, so we are really mindful of, uh, of the information that is being shared and our integration has really um, ensured that every bit of data is anonymized throughout uh, and reported back to, to Alula in a, in a way that's safe and accurate. So that's uh, our stance on the matter. Thanks, Kerry. And, and really, 
So, so first up from, from the Lula's perspective and, and specifically around how we manage data in the VivaScore solution, the data access and storage is governed by consent permissions granted by both the end user um, and our compliance with regulatory requirements of the specific country or territory that we're operating in. All of our solutions are cloud hosted. We have um, appropriate backup uh, failover data redundancy measures, which all comply with regulatory governance standards. So we're, we're really stringent around how we apply in-country processing of, of information according to regulatory um, standards. Um, personal health information is, is never shared in a manner that could easily identify an individual to either their employer, their insurer, or their healthcare provider. And data is, is only shared um, with organizations when it's anonymized. So we aggregate, anonymize the data. This further preserves the um, privacy of an individual um, at every point, really. Um, and then kind of lastly, once the, the use of our solution concludes um, or kind of the use of, of VivaScore um, terminates, all personally identifiable data is securely deleted. It's not shared with any third parties. Um, and then maybe kind of a final point around some of the outputs is the reporting is all password protected, uh, guaranteeing continuous safeguarding of user data. Um, inside the application, our users can revoke access at any point. So maybe going back to the consent process, they can revoke any access um, at, at any stage, and they can also delete their entire profile um, if and when required. Great. Uh, and finally, um, I'd just like to come to each of you to understand your sort of overall view of the potential for this technology and I guess where you see it best sitting within the life and health insurance value chain. Um, so maybe Simon, if I come to you first. Yeah, sure. So um, kind of our, you know, we, we, firstly, we really enjoyed the pilots. I think we, we took a lot of learnings from the users. Um, it was an excep exceptional experience for us. We took a lot of feedback. Um, part of the pilot was collecting information through surveys. We have taken a lot of that information on board um, and kind of really pleased to say we've we've worked with that. Um, we're in kind of a heavy uh, development process right now where we're launching our VivaScore version two. Um, that's coming into the market in August. Uh, that really takes a lot of this feedback um, into play. Um, it's expanded in terms of some of the user journeys, the capabilities, we've brought in some new features. Um, and it's all backed by a really kind of supercharged design experience um, with with really good UI and, and UX. Um, so we're really excited about the the potential. Um, I see, you know, certainly in in this collaboration is the ability to, you know, as we set out to do, was understand someone's health status, um, and then really kind of work with that, you know, through partners like Ally Health, is to kind of deepen that understanding, and then provide this ongoing assessment and continual um, risk capability. You know, through our, our partnership with Hanover Re. So, you know. so from from our perspective, like I will uh, I will echo uh, Simon's words, and and we're very excited and, and grateful for the opportunity to pilot um, the the combined solution. From our perspective, uh, our mission at Ally is really to drive increased accessibility to preventative uh, health solutions, and and we do that across a whole host of different uh, interventions and, and channels, but really we see the role of, uh, of insurers and reinsurers as being one of the key uh, levers that we have here to really impact population scale uh, health. So that's really exciting for us and really looking forward to seeing how this gets adopted further. So having been part of the Viva School pilot, I can share my own personal experiences of, of what excited me having been a part of that. So I think what really stood out to me was the combination of combining the wearables data with the RPPD data with the clinical health data all in one place. So I got a really detailed 360 degree view of my health. And I think there's loads of potential for that within insurance. So I'd love to see it being a used for maybe for underwriting using some of this different health data, maybe for helping enforce customers to understand their health more, encouraging them to be healthier, and of course, taking relevant clinical action to follow up with their doctors, where they spot some potential concerning results as well. So I see potentials right across the value chain, all the way from underwriting through to customer engagement, all the way through to claims management. But very similar themes, uh, I think you can probably summarize my uh, excitement in sort of engagement and intervention, really. I think uh, that this, we're in a, a perfect era, I think, to engage better with our policyholders 
um, there's a greater expectation from policyholders that we provide more than the assurance of paying a claim um, should the worst happen to the, the policyholders. And I think we have that perfect alignment of interest to, to really try to make a difference through technologies such as Alula Health and with support of uh, Alula Technologies and uh, Ally Health. Um, so I, I, I think there's a, a real opportunity for us to intervene when necessary and for us to improve customer outcomes. Thank you. Um, I think the thing that I'm most excited about with this uh, technology is the potential it has for in-force management. Uh, I think there's a natural alignment between the interests of policyholders and insurers. Policyholders uh, want to be healthier, want to live longer. Uh, insurers want them to claim less and, uh, and therefore be healthier. Uh, and if we can use this tech to uh, enable people to get earlier diagnosis, uh, then I think that will really help to improve the health of those policyholders and reduce the claims cost for, uh, for insurers on our products. So I'd like to thank Kelly, Simon, Lisa and Gareth for joining me today. Um, and I'd like to encourage everybody watching to go to our website. Uh, there's the article on there that you can download that gives it more insight into the uh, pilot that we did uh, and the potential that we see in this technology. Uh, and there's also the original webinar available to watch on there as well. And please feel free to reach out to any, any of us as well if you'd like to uh, engage further on this topic uh, or anything related. Uh, but for now, thank you and goodbye.